A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, King Herod laid hands upon some members of the church to harm them. He has James, the brother of John, killed by the sword. And when he saw that this was pleasing to the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter also. It was the feast of unleavened bread. He had him taken into custody and put him in prison, under the guard of four soldiers each. He intended to bring him before the people after Passover. Peter thus was being kept in prison, but prayer by the church was fervently being made to God on his behalf. On the very night before Herod was to bring him to trial, Peter, secured by double chains, was sleeping between two soldiers, while outside the door, guards kept watch on the prison. Suddenly, the angel of the Lord stood by, and a light shone in the cell. He touched Peter on the side and awakened him, saying, Get up quickly. The chains fell from his arms. The angel said to him, Put on your cloak and your sandals. He did so. Then he said to him, Put your belt and follow me. So he followed him out, not realizing that what was happening through the angel was real. He thought he was seeing a vision. He passed by the first guard, then the second, and came to the iron gate leading out to the city which opened for them by itself. They emerged and made their way down an, an alley, and suddenly the angel left him. Then Peter recovered his senses and said, Now I know for certain that the Lord sent his angel and rescued me from the hand of Herod and from all that the Jew Jewish people were expressing. Verbum Domini. Happy 
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. I, Paul, am already being poured out like a libation, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have competed well, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. From now on, the crown of righteousness awaits me, which the Lord, the just judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but to all who have longed for this appearance. The Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the proclamation might be completed, and all the Gentiles might hear it. And I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil threat and will bring me safe to the heavenly kingdom to him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Verbum Domini. Dominus Vobiscum. Lexio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Mateum. When Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Verbum Domini.
We cannot help but be amazed at the life and work and service of Saints Peter and Paul. Their charity and ministry is astounding. Their words are insightful and powerful. But both Peter and Paul were truly human, and both of them received the forgiveness of the Lord. They had a powerful conversion, and they were transformed into the very image of Jesus Christ. Jesus, though, in the Gospel of Luke, speaks about two men. One man was a Pharisee. The other was a tax collector, or what people in that day called a sinner. Well, the Pharisee boasted of his many works and praised himself for all the fasting he did and the works of charity he was doing. While the tax collector stood by and beat his chest and said, Father, forgive me for I have sinned. You know, and he couldn't even look up to heaven. Jesus says that, he, that God finds more favor with the one who was beating his breast, who said, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Well, Peter and Paul were both like the Pharisee before they received the forgiveness of the Lord. Paul was an actual Pharisee. Peter behaved like one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> However, God had different plans for them. You know, though they, they didn't seem to appear to possess the characteristics or the qualifications necessary to be these great apostles that they became, for one thing, Peter was impatient. He was over, also overconfident. We know that he denied the Lord three times. He was also impetuous, and he spoke out of place many times. You would look at Peter and you'd say, you're a fool, a loudmouthed buffoon, and a coward. <laughs> How could you be uh, this great apostle? I mean, who would have ever predicted if they, if they went and looked at the gospel and looked at all of Peter's faults? They never thought he would be the man he would become. And then here comes Paul. <laughs> well... <laughs> Paul, of course, was a Pharisee and possessed all the rigid characteristics a Pharisee had. He was arrogant and he hated Christians. He was determined to abolish Christianity. He was harsh in his persecutions and he was harsh in, those, in, in his imprisonments too. He would gather up the Christians and throw them in jail. So we look at these guys and say, well, what, why did God choose them? But then we have to think, we have to think about, about God because God's ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. Man looks at the heart, uh, man looks at the appearance, but God looks into the heart. And this is what he did for both Peter and Paul. In the Gospel of Matthew, uh, in our reading today, Peter was, is made the rock of the church. He is, made the, he is the rock on which Jesus will build his church. And Jesus hands him over the keys of the kingdom of heaven. But what are these keys? Well, in the ancient uh, Near East, the keys were, were, a, were a symbol of, of one handing over authority for example, a king would, would have keys and give them to a prime minister and place them in a high position of authority, and this meant that he had the power of the king to rule, though, even though he was in a, kind of a second place or second, second in ranking. Peter is given the royal authority of Jesus Christ to govern the church, and so his successors. And then we read about binding and loosing. Binding, the church is given the authority to, to, to bind on earth, to um, define dogmas, divine church teachings, to excommunicate. 
The church, the church is also given the authority of loosening, which loosening means to loosen excommunication, loosen interdicts, loose, loosen sins, and forgive people of all their sins. So it is appropriate that Peter receive the keys. Peter, who was a sinner himself, you know, could, could understand forgiveness very well because he received the forgiveness of the Lord. So he knew he would know better than anybody how to forgive. And this would stay with him through the rest of his life. See, it wasn't until their encounter with the risen Lord that Peter and Paul were converted. Okay, even though we, we have this reading here and, and Jesus giving this office to Peter, he still betrayed him later on. It was at the betrayal that Peter was confronted with his own cowardice and weaknesses. He, he knew, he, immediately he knew who he really was. And then after the Lord resurrected, he repented, saying to the Lord, I'm sorry for my sins. And he received the mercy and forgiveness of Jesus and was ready to move forward. And is, it is the same with St. Paul. St. Paul, on his journey to kill more Christians, was struck down by a brilliant light. He was blinded by the light and, f and fell to the ground. And Jesus said to him, Paul, or Saul, he was called then, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he, and he says, who are you, Lord? And he says, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. So immediately, he, Jesus Christ, the resurrected Lord, revealed himself to Paul. He was blinded for three days, and then Ananias came over and baptized him. And the cleansing powers of, of baptism through the Holy Spirit released him from his sins. He was forgiven. What's amazing is that these two men were able to receive the forgiveness of the Lord. Yes, they were great sinners. But once Jesus has forgiven us, it is forgotten. Though we maintain some of the effects of sin, and though we may be inclined toward the sin, the sin is still forgiven. And with the keys of the kingdom being handed over to the church, this, and, and the power of binding and loosing, this makes the church a refuge for sinners, a place and a house and a dwelling for sinners to come and be forgiven and be restored, restored to the image of Christ, restored to the full, or I should say better, to the way they were supposed, intended to be as image of God and likeness of Christ. So in Peter, though, we see in Peter his resilience because though he, he fell, he was ready to pick himself up after he fell, after he received the forgiveness of the Lord. He, he says, okay, I've sinned. He got himself up and he moved forward in God. Okay, many of us, when, when we are, when we sin, we, we, we think that, that this is the end of the world. He says, oh, forget it. Um, I've sinned and I've done wrong and that's it. Or else we may think, well, uh, you know, I, I've sinned, I've asked for forgiveness, I went to confession, but then why should I keep, why should, why should I keep going to confession? Because I'm just going to commit the same, the same sin over and over again. Well, Peter, we can, we can look at, example, as his, at his example and, say, and see, well, every time he sinned, he picked himself up again. He made a lot of mistakes. Like I said, he was a loud mouth and you know, and, and he was humbled by the Lord many times. Because after Jesus had given him this prophet, this, uh, this commission here, he, what does he do? He says, uh, Jesus says, well, I'm going to die. I'm going to rise again. And, and then Peter interrupts him and says, no, you're, you're, you're not going to die. I will forbid it. You, 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 you know, I will not let you die. And then Jesus rebukes him, calls him Satan. Get behind me, Satan. He was casting out because he was thinking like a man, not like God. And then, after Jesus had forgiven him in, uh, at the Sea of Galilee and washed away his sins, again, he, he does it again. He starts asking about John. John, was none of, it's none of his business about what John is doing. And Jesus has to rebuke him again. 
But of course, Peter asks for forgiveness again. And then he receives the power of the Holy Spirit. So we, we, must look, we must look at his example and say, well, okay, I sin. Let me get back up again. Let me go to confession. Let me go ask for forgiveness again and again. Even if we have to go every week to confession, we, we have to keep going. We have to be resilient in our desire for repentance, our desire to, to be like God, like both Peter and Paul. Because though they fell, they always pick themselves up again. And this, this, of course, takes some humility and docility. Earlier I spoke about the, the Pharisee who was very proud, very prideful, and he didn't think he was in sin. Of course, you know, the sin that we don't confess is a sin that can be forgiven. If we don't think we're sinning, then, of course, we, we can be forgiven for that sin. Um, so we always need to be aware of, of where we're sinning in our lives and pray to the Holy Spirit to awaken in us those things in our lives that may be keeping us or distan distancing ourselves from the Lord. Well, Peter and Paul always stayed close to the mercy of God throughout their whole lives, and they depended on his grace. And this is what helped them persevere in their uh, call as apostles, was always staying close to the mercy of God, like, that's, like the sinner was in the story I talked about earlier. They, they always were repented. They always confessed their sins. They were aware of their sins. And a lot of this occurred by just their very love for the Lord, by the time they spent in prayer and the time they spent in loving the people of God. Because as they came closer to God, as they prayed more profoundly, they were more aware of their sins. And because they were more aware of their sins, they were able to ask for mercy and his pardon. And they were able to stay in the mercy of God. Okay. So that's what we must do also, is stay in the mercy of the Lord. So whatever sin we've committed, God is always ready to forgive. There's no sin that cannot be forgiven. Jesus holds his arms open. He loves all his creation, and he, he wants us to come to him. He's always calling us to draw closer to himself. So he's calling us all the time to come closer to him. But we must ask for forgiveness, and he's there to embrace us immediately. So whatever we've done, we look at Peter and Paul and says, hey, look, these are, are sinful men. And Paul killed Christians, and, you know, Peter had a big mouth. And he said many things out of place. But God forgave him, and the Lord will forgive whatever we have done. Saints Peter and Paul, they never wanted to return back to their sinful ways. They spoke about it in their writings. Because they know if they returned to their sinful ways, they'd be returned to the misery of sin. But after receiving the love and mercy of God... What joy can be better than that? And, and they could look back on their sins and say, wow, this is disgusting. This is misery. I can't believe I lived in, in this pride, in this hatred, in this unforgiveness. And now they are set free. So God wants to do this for all of us. Even if whatever we've done, he wants to set us free. He wants to take us out of the misery, the slavery of sin. One thing about loosening here is loosening means to set free. So the Lord has given his church, his priest, the ability to forgive sins. It's the person of Christ who forgives the sin in, in, through the priest. So again, Jesus calls us to himself and we must be mindful of the examples of Peter and Paul and say, well, you know, I could, I, I need to stay close to, to the mercy of God. I need to constantly draw closer to the Lord so that I can be more pure, so that I can be more like him. Because G what Jesus gave to Peter and Paul, he will also give to us. Jesus, the Lord is, is fair. And you know, so there's nothing that he will not give us. He always provides for our needs. And, and as St. Paul says, he does so according to his riches and glory. So let us come to the Lord, you know, with our hearts. 
And those out there, if you know, you're, you're caught in the chains of, of, of the slavery of sin or the misery of, of a sinful life, the Lord's love is, is here for you, and he's ready to forgive you and to make you new again. May God bless you all.